what we're going to look at is we're going to look at a video of Mr. Palmer stepping off one of the lab tables. If you look very closely, you will be able to see my lamb chop cipher. <coughs> So what we're going to look at here is the collision between Mr. Palmer and the floor. So I step off the desk and I run into the floor. And what we can do is we can actually go through and figure out the force of impact during this collision. And of course the joy of digital video is that we can go through step by step and look at the entire process. So we have two different parts. I start up here. I step off the desk. We have the free fall portion which is right here, and then right there is where I start to collide with the ground. And this is the beginning of the second part, and then I collide with the ground right here, and I bend my knees. Now, what we're going to look at and figure out is the net force during this collision. Ah, uh, digital video. Isn't it so much fun? Okay. So here we go. Our exam. We're going to figure out the force of impact. Uh, when I bend my knees, uh, stepping off the lab table. So here I am. Here's the lab table. I'm very small relative to the lab table, but I'm happy nonetheless. I step off the lab table and I hit the floor. And our goal is to figure out the force of impact when I run into the floor. So why don't we be very clear, we have part one, which is the free fall portion. While I'm flying through the vacuum, vacuum that you can breathe. And part two, the collision portion. Now, we are clearly going to figure out the force of impact when we use the force of impact equation, which is the net force equals the change in momentum over change in time, or mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial divided by delta t. So we clearly need my mass. My mass is approximately 68 kilograms, which is just less than 150 pounds. Um, now, in this equation, we have yet to identify whether these velocities and time are part one or part two, whether they're going to have a one or a two as a subscript to Travis. In the net force equation here, with the force of impact, am I going to put ones or two? Two. Exactly. So please notice that this whole force section where we're figuring out the force of impact is during part two, during the collision. So this whole piece, whenever we're using the force, it has to do with just the collision, this part right here. Now, mass, we have, it's 68 kilograms. Velocity to final, we actually have velocity to final. Mr. Harris, what is that? Velocity to? The final velocity at the end of the <coughs> collision. Zero. It would be zero. Now notice, it's not quite zero, it's actually only almost zero, but again, we're doing kind of an approximation here to figure out what the force of impact is. So it's not going to be perfect, but it is very close to zero. So we're going to say V2 final is zero. When I'm done colliding with the ground, I have stopped. Good. We have the mass again is 68, my mass. And V2 initial, we do not have yet, but we'll talk about in a minute. Now, delta T2 is the time during the collision. So it's the time during this event which is one of the great things about digital video, I can actually go through and look at that number right there. That number right there is a nine, which tells me that the change in time during the collision, the second part here, is nine frames. Now we can convert from nine frames of video to the time, the actual time in seconds if we know the frame rate of this video. This is standard definition NTSC video, and who knows the frame rate of standard definition NTSC video? Come on, there are those of you amongst us who know these things. I knew it at one point, I can't. There are those of you who knew it. Yes. Really? There's usually somebody that can spout out the different 
statistics about, okay, what about high definition? Everybody you know the frame rate of high definition video, NTSC? A movie that you go to see in the movie theater? These are all numbers that, strangely, there's usually somebody in the room that knows. Sarah, you got nothing for me? Wow. Okay. When you go see a movie in the movie theater, that is actually at 24 frames per second. A DVD and broadcast signals are actually at 29.97 frames per second. We're going to round that off to 30 frames per second, which of course produces an issue when you go from the cinema to a DVD. They actually have to make up six frames every second. And high definition video is actually at 60 frames per second, which is interesting. Now, I actually don't know, because we have switched from uh, film to digital projections now, projectors now at movie theaters, so I don't know what they, what they use there. I need to look into that one, because that's a, a format I'm not familiar with. I can, I can clearly see you guys are wrapped. Just thrilled to hear all this stuff. Okay, what's the vertical res resolution of high definition video? Got yeah, nobody, nothing. It's very interesting. Do you guys ever watch TV? Interesting, and yet you don't know anything about it. That's sad. The term 720p, 1080p don't mean anything to you. 1920 by 1080, nothing. It's really interesting. <laughs> Is the vertical frame uh, vertical resolution? Vertical resolution is at thirty-two point eight six. No, unfortunately not. In standard definition, standard definition video, the number of vertical dots is four hundred eighty. In your high definition video, it is ten eighty. Something something wrong with you guys. You, you guys need to learn about what you're looking at. Katie, you gotta actually think about these things. Whew. Sydney, how you doing? You guys are very lackluster today. Don't we worry, Michael. I will. This we're gonna we're gonna wake you up a little bit. Travis. I thought that 1080 was just uh, the total pixels per square inch. No, 1080 refers to the vertical number of pixels. 1080. It's a 16 by 9 frame. So the uh, vertical is 1080, the, which is your nine, and the the width is. Uh, 1920. Gotcha. All right, I'll move on. Here we go. So we have at nine frames, we have 30 frames per second. So we have one second on the top. Frames cancel out, and we get nine thirtieths of a second. So the time for the collision is approximately one third of a second. Nine divided by 30. So the only thing we need now is V2 initial. The initial velocity for this collision going backwards it's going to be the velocity right there, right when I strike the ground. How are we going to figure out the V2 initial? Josh, you got any ideas for me? How are we going to figure out the velocity initial for the collision? Um, so the velocity final for the free fall. So notice the first thing you want to identify is this is the final velocity of part one, the final velocity for the free fall portion. So now we're going to switch from talking about part two to talking about part one so that we can figure out the final velocity for part one. So how are we going to figure out the final velocity for part one, Ron? You could. You could go through and use UAM. We know the acceleration in free fall is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We could go through and do it that way. It's not the way I'm going to do it this time, uh, just because we've done that so many times, I'd rather use a different route. But certainly, you could go through and do that. Who's got another way we could figure out the velocity final for the free fall portion? Other than using UAM. Brianna? We know there's no friction when you're flying through the vacuum that you can breathe, so we can use mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. We have to set up our initial and final points. The initial point we'll put up here on top of the desk. The final point we'll put down here right at the point where we start to run into the ground. And the zero line we'll put at the ground. Mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. Please, Hamza, walk through uh, the types of mechanical energy we start with and what we end with and what we don't have, for example, what we have in the 
Good, no kinetic energy initial, initial velocity zero. We are above the zero line. So, oh, and I should put ones here because we're talking about part one. So this is mechanical energy one initial, mechanical energy one final. So this would be height one initial. So we've done kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. No spring throughout the whole problem, so we don't have that initial or final. Uh, so it equals kinetic energy final. We have some sort of velocity final. And there's no gravitational potential energy because we're half zero. Good. So we end up with m g h one initial equals one half m one m v one final squared. Joking. Everybody brought mass to the party. We can be equitable. We can take mass from everyone. You get a brief moment to look behind the scenes here. I use iTunes. You can see. And the way I get only one song to play at a time. So if you look, I have all of them unchecked. That's how I get one song to play at a time if you want to do this at home. So we end up with V1 final equals 2GH1 initial, the square root of, which means we need the initial height of the lab table. We come over here, we measure the initial height of the lab table. We get 91.0 centimeters or 0 0.910 meters. So height one initial equals 0 0.910 meters. So we get for V1 final, it equals two times 9.8 times 0 0.910, the square root of V1 final equals. So 3, 3 is fine here. So we get 4.2233 meters per second. We know that's down, so because we take the square root, we can decide whether it's positive or negative. And so we get the velocity one final, which is equal to, as we identified, V2 initial. Okay. So we now get V1 final is equal to V2 initial. We have figured out the velocity for the second part initial. We can come back to the original equation we had. The net force then is equal to 0 minus 68 multiplied by negative 4.2233 divided by our 9 thirtieths of a second. Negative 957.274278. That's plenty. We do have a negative times a negative here, so it does work out to be a positive. Uh, and what are the dimensions on this? Sip? Mass or, uh, mass or mass or mass or it would be if we had figured out um, momentum, but we did not figure out momentum. We figured out the net force or the force of impact during this period. So it's in newtons. Now, we don't have a good tangible reality of what newtons are. So uh, we're going to convert this over to pounds so we have a better concept of how much force this actually is. So 4.448 newtons is one pound. So we can convert this over by multiplying or divided by 4.448. So with sig figs, 220 pounds. So when I step off the desk, there is a net force acting through on my body of 220 pounds. So the force of impact on my body is 220 pounds. Which is actually, when you think about it, that's still a fair amount of force, 220 pounds. Now class, when I stepped off the desk, would you say that I bent my knees a little or a lot? If you look at the picture, I actually bent my knees just about as much as one can bend their knees when stepping off the desk. Okay, 